What is up guys, welcome to my channel. It has been 8 years since Hot Toys released the DX12 in 2014, and this year we finally got a new Dark Knight version Batman. As a die-hard fan, I couldn't miss it. So today, I am gonna do a detailed review of the new DX19 and compare it with all the previous versions. And as always, before doing that, let's check out the figure and accessories first. This is the third time Hot Toys released the TDK version Batman as one of the DX series. The previous two were DX02 and DX12. Besides that, Hot Toys has also released the Armory version and a 1 4th scale version Batman. But a lot of new collectors may not know that there is actually another version were released even earlier than what I just mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet the MMS-71, aka the original TDK Batman. When you compare it with the DX-19, you can literally see the evolution of Hot Toys. Before me reviewing the figure, I want to use one sentence to summarize the new DX-19. It is the latest one and it might be the best one so far, but definitely not the one fans deserve. First, the box. The design is very similar to the diecast Iron Man's. You need to put it out from the side. And the box is made with regular paper boards. Compared with the DX02 and DX12, this one feels a lot of cheaper in terms of design and material. On the top, Hot Toys put a keychain. In O2, we get three battle rings and this iconic line from the film. In 12, we get a blueprint of the bat. For me, I'm not exactly sure why this keychain is here. It's quite random. Under that, we have the figure, two head sculpts and some accessories. At the very bottom, there is the stand and the cape. The black sponge does remind me of the good old DX series, but I mean, look at this fading blurry print. Hot Toys is really not as careful as before in terms of small details. Okay, so now let's check out the body and the armor first. The DX19 is a bit higher than the O2 and 12. Also, when I compared it with other characters from the trilogy, the DX19 is also the highest. But the Two Face 2.0 has the same height as the DX19. So I think all the new TDK figures that Hot Toys is going to release in the future will have this new body height. And taller does make it look better. The original version's quality is way too old fashioned. So next up, when I do comparisons, I am going to skip this one and only compare the DX19 with DX02, DX12, and the Armory version. About the armor, the chest pieces of the DX19 is larger than all previous versions. And the carbon board part on the lower chest is more detailed and clear. Among the four, the DX19 has the best chest pieces. 
DX12 is on the second spot, the Armory version on the third, and the X02 is at the last. I mean, you can see why. The belly part of the DX19 is not so different from the DX12 and the Armory version, but the gap between the rib pieces and belly is much smaller than those two. I like this change a lot. The carbon boards on those spots are also well made. The DX02's belly looks quite different from the other three, but the small details are well carved. The DX19's looks a bit blurry. On the lower body, gaps between the rubber pieces on the DX19 are also much narrower than all the previous versions. It looks very natural and very close to the costume from the film. The knee armors are not so different from the DX12 and armory version. The biggest change is still the carbon board details. On the DX02, for some reason Hot Toys didn't even make the separate knee pieces. The boots are still designed as two separate parts. The looking didn't change and the remote at the bottom is still undetachable. But the pattern on the side are much better and Hot Toys put a layer of shiny paint on that. It looks quite nice. The arm pieces also didn't change much. But because the DX19 has a newly developed body, the arms are thicker than before. Therefore, the arm pieces are also a bit larger. The DX19 has the largest shoulder pieces, but not much larger than the other three. One very disappointing thing is that Hot Toys did not change the design of the elbow part. Same as the other three, when you bend the arms, this part will stick out. And by looking at this picture, obviously, it shouldn't be like this. Gloves have nothing new, besides the paint are darker and shinier. The neck is a little bit thicker than the DX12 and the Armory version, but it is very hard to tell the difference. The looking of the belt has no upgrades. The color is darker than the Armory version, more like DX12s. And on some spots, we still get these little plastic flaws. Actually, the DX02 has the finest work. The belt still has the hook at the back, but it only has one color. The other three versions have two colors on that. And the DX12 and DX02 came with two belts. This time, we only get one. What can I say? I guess it's for eco-friendly purposes? The design of this cape is one of the biggest changes of the DX19. Finally, it doesn't feel like a blanket anymore. The material is pretty light and thin. Also, it has some flexibility and sags smoothly. I didn't attach capes on all my TDK Batmans for one reason. They are terrible. The DX02's cape is double layered, super heavy, and thick. DX12's and Armory's versions are a little bit better but still not even close to how the cape is in the film. After more than 10 years, we finally got a OK one. But some problems still exist, such as the V shape at the back is too small and the bad stitching work. The attaching method is still the same. Plug the two small pieces on the cape in here, and that's it. Because the new body is taller, Hot Toys also made the head bigger this time. I noticed that the DX19's head size is same as the DX02, which means the DX12 and the Armory version have the smallest heads. But I like the bigger head much better. The body portion looks fantastic. And it doesn't look weird at all if you want to use it on the DX12 or the Armory version's body. The eyes are also different looking. I think this new head has the best Christian Bale look. To move the eyeballs, you need to use this little tool. Another thing is that Hot Toys changed the eyeball adjustment method from unified to separated. So now you can do some one side minor adjustments. I think this is a great change. And now let's check out the accessories. The DX19 didn't come in with any new things. All the accessories are same as the previous versions. There are four different hands, one with open palm, and the other three are for holding things. The gadgets are as usual, three battery rings and two flash grenades. But I really want to complain about the quality of these things. The tip of this battery ring is bent. And look at this grenade, it's not even a round shape and the paints are out of the boundaries. 
Come on, Hot Toys. Besides these, we also get three guns. The purple gun is same as the one in DX12. You can pull here and detach the mag. The EMP and Sticky Bomb Shooter are also same as the previous ones. The EMP only has one light hole still, but mine can't be turned on for some reason. I noticed that there is a crack on the light, so I guess it's broken before me even touched it? The Sticky Bomb Shooter can be detached and folded, but just look at how unstable these parts are. The gun can barely stay straight. Also, the flaw on the scope is super obvious. The most ridiculous part is that the thing connects the grip and the gun is missing, which means the grip doesn't stay. Oh man. Besides the guns, the ball joints. I've been collecting Hot Toys figures for 14 years, and this is the first ball joint I have ever broke. I was just simply pulling it out of the hand, and the next thing you know, it just became two pieces. I cannot believe the quality inspection of Hot Toys has fallen this hard. Except this battering holding hand, the other two hands look super awkward either you use them to hold the grenades or the guns. I guess it will cost Hot Toys another million dollars to develop a few new hands. That's why they are not doing it. The three mouse shapes are newly made. They fit in the helmet pretty nicely. And the paint work is the best so far. But I really want to know, what are these cracks at the back? Previously, the sonar head only came with the DX02. When I compare these two heads, I noticed that the light holes on the DX19 are bigger, and the DX02's light come from the neck, instead of the head. In terms of brightness, the DX19 is super bright, you can literally use it as a flashlight. But it takes a lot of work and patience to install the batteries. The batteries are super small, and the slot is very deep in the head. You will have to use some tools to help yourself. Otherwise, is a mission impossible. We got the sticky bomb shooter and sonar head. Can we also have the backpack? The answer is no. If you want this accessory, you will have to buy a DX02 or a 1 4th scale version. The Bruce Wayne head sculpt is also a bit bigger than the one from DX12. I think this head is better than all previous versions. I give it a 7 out of 10. Let me know what your rating is in the comment. This head sculpt is made by a third party brand. I think it looks very nice too. Which one is your favorite among these four? The neck armor has nothing new, only a bit bigger than the previous ones. One problem I noticed is when you put this piece on, the neck looks way too short. And to fix that, you need to push the neck armor as low as possible. But if you do that, the neck armor is pretty much not showing at all, which looks very different from the film. The last accessory is the stand. This is the same stand from the DX12. However, Hot Toys did some changes and made it worse. First, they changed the metal name plate to this black plastic plate. It looks super cheap. Second, they sealed the battery slot and removed the lighting function. But they kept the light holes. I really don't understand why. And the paint work on the surface has a lot of blackish color. It doesn't look as natural as the X12s. And lastly, let's check out the mobility. The DX12 in the fabric is a whole new design. The material became thinner, and now it doesn't bother much when you move the body parts. The arms can be lifted up almost to 90 degree. The forearms can be bended way much more compared with the DX12. But still, lifting up to the front and back is still not ideal. And the wrists have zero mobility because of the design of the gloves. The glove design have been like this since forever, and Hot Toys still didn't change it. The upper body can be moved just a little bit, but compared with the previous versions, the body does not bounce back and stays quite nicely. However, the lower body stretching amount of the DX19 is not as great as the DX12. Legs will bounce back very obviously, 
And same as the forearms, the lower legs can be bended way much more than the DX12. The ankle part didn't have any improvements, they are pretty much same as the previous ones. The DXO2 has the worst mobility among all. Because the suit is made with 100% rubber, there is no fabric. Therefore, all body parts can't stay the way you want them to be. The only pose you can do is standing still. And the upper body can't be moved at all, cause there's no joints inside. The helmet head is still attached with magnet. The neck and the head both can be moved very freely. The Bruce Wayne head can turn to the side very easily and Boeing is okay too. The same as the DX12, it can barely look up. Although the mobility has a big improvement, but still it's hard for the Batman to ride the Batpod. Unless you do some serious stretchings. The DX19 is taller, so it's also difficult to fit him into the Batmobile. So I suggest you do not let him ride anything. Otherwise, the figure might be damaged. Overall, I think the DX19 is definitely not perfect. Considering it has been 8 years since the DX12 was released, it didn't come with a lot of new things and instead it came with a bunch of old things. And one thing I really couldn't stand is the product quality. Some of you may want to ask, if I already have the DX12 or the Armory version, is it still worth it to buy the new DX19? My suggestion is it depends on if you are a diehard fan or not. If you are, then the DX19 is a must-have, because it has the best suit design and most accurate appearance by far. But if you are not a super fan, then maybe you can just pass this one, because the DX12 and the Armory version are also good enough. Alright, there you have it, the DX19 Batman from Hot Toys. I hope you all enjoyed the video, if you did, please like and subscribe. This is 33, I'll see you guys in the next one.